Welcome to Marvel Vision, a podcast about Marvel, the MCU, and right now, Agatha, all along, I'm Spooky Alex. I'm Haunted Justin. And I'm Pete. <laughs> Just a regular old, normal old Pete. The Pete is thing haunted of enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we are going to be talking about the first two episodes of Agatha All Along, Seekest Thou the Road, and Circle Sown with Fate, Unlock Thy Hidden Gate. So if you haven't ooh, seen them on Disney+, Plus, are you casting ooh. a spell on Yeah. Oh. Alex, oh. you're casting a spell on me. <laughs> Am I you enchanting that. you? Anyway, we're going to talk about those episodes. If you haven't watched them on Disney+, Plus, turn away, because we're definitely going to get into spoilers as we break them down, talk about them, our reactions to the show that is coming very late after WandaVision. But to give you a brief overview of the plot of the first two episodes, we pick up several years after WandaVision, after Doctor Strange and Three years. Madness. Yes, Pete. Do you want to do the recap? I'll turn it over to you. Go ahead. No, he likes just to do trying to help. instant I'm corrections. Just, I'm literally just Do you know what it out. is? Do you know what it is? It's not helping, actually. You uh, are being like uh -oh. Agatha on this show. and This and coven's getting off to a weird start, <laughs> just like Agatha's. And, uh, I want to stick this coven in the oven. You know what I'm talking about? So don't I blast me. Nice I can't bake it flowers up. that way. So Agatha's been trapped in Wanda Spell for three years at this point. In Westview, she is experiencing a Mayor of Easttown style show. But due to the shenanigans of Teen, played by Joe Locke, and Rio Vidal, played by Aubrey Plaza, she manages to break out of the spell, realize she doesn't have any power, and because of that, some maybe good witches because she's a bad witch, but let's call them villainous witches called the Salem Seven are after her. They absolutely want to obliterate her. She manages to gather a coven in time to walk the witch's road, which will ostensibly give her her power back, as well as giving these other witches a little something, a gift, a boon at the end. And that's where we end the second episode, them escaping the Salem Seven, starting to walk the witch's road and going on their merry old way. Now, Normally we'd talk about these episodes separately, but they did drop, and I do think, without Double jumping drop. ahead too much, these very much are part one and part two of a two-part premiere, so I think it was good that they dropped them both at once. But overall impressions, why don't we do that? It has been years since WandaVision. We really haven't gotten any Marvel TV in a good long while as well. So what did you think was exciting to have it back? Were you bummed out? Do you are you, I guess if you don't like it, you're a misogynist, so let's go ahead. Oh wow, nice. that's that's intense. Uh, first off, I was just uh, I was happy with the Marvel flip. I thought it was a nice adjustment, uh, you know, to the show. So it made me very happy. Oh, adjustment. over wait, did it really? I actually want to ask you that because I was bummed out about it. We got the new Marvel television logo, which is just like a quick little sting and yeah. tuning in the Marvel logo. I missed the Marvel flip, so it's crazy. To hear you say that. Pete. Well, yeah, I, I like the fact that we got comics and we got the color purple. So I thought like, okay, that's a nice Agatha kind of mm -hmm. nod. But in you, the flip. time has passed. You've grown up and you hate the Marvel flip now. So you're happy that yeah. it was shorter and you could just get it out of the way and get onto the good stuff. Wow. Uh, do you just want to tell me how I feel about this show? Or I'm do just I trying to help. No. I'm just trying to help. Oh, wow. I'm just oh, trying to be good. This is good. Love, I think love. we need to all walk the Marvel flip road. <laughs> take off your <laughs> shoes bring, first, because when you back. walk a road, you got to make sure you take off your shoes. Yeah, that's true. It's the softest part of the forest, the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. No shirt, Those no leaves shoes. Look service. Super... That's what we learned from this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think for overall, just talking about it, there are moments where I had a blast. There are other moments where I was like, okay, get to it. Like when the cop thing I thought was a fun bit, but then I was like, we're doing this a little long. But I, I, I thought it was a kind of a fun thing to lean into, like WandaVision. They're playing with tropes, and it was fun to see Agatha go through the different transformations and kind of remind us, like, I oh, remember WandaVision, remember when she was dressed like this? Oh, the black and white version was cool. So, yeah, there were parts of it that I love the cast. I think that I'm excited for what's to come. Um, but, yeah, there was also parts that I was like, well, this is dragging a little bit. But overall... Um, I think it, it's a, it should be an exciting show. I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Justin, what about you? It's an interesting show. It's not, I expected it to be more of sort of a reset of ideas, but it turns out maybe this is like the last show out before Marvel was like, hold up, we have to reset how we do things. Uh, because this feels very much like in the middle of a lot of things is my big takeaway. Like I want it to be super funny, but it doesn't want to be that. 
Oh, and, and it wants to be a little bit scary, but it also yeah. doesn't want to commit to that because Agatha is funny um, at her core, uh, technically. So, and there's there's a lot of cool stuff. I thought the song uh, is really interesting. I think it's shot pretty well. I like. Yeah. I thought it was scary, especially at the end of the second episode. The um, the black cloaked. Which oh is- my god! Those yeah, the, the seven the seven or the Salem seven. Uh, yeah. yeah, super scary. That was, I think, really well done, especially when you saw like one and then there was all seven. And yeah. then where, oh, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. It really freaks me the fuck out. But like a, like a lot of Marvel shows, I feel like they're being so coy with information that it's hard to get be, be it's hard to be having as much fun as the show seems to want us to have with all of these characters. And I mean, Agatha, I mean, truly every single character. The only character I can really like feel like I see them is uh, the her pet, the sort of sidekick character that we wait. Are uh, you talking about her actual pet, Senor Scratchy, or are you talking no. about Joe Locke as Teed? Joe yeah. Locke as Teed, who she oh, okay. calls pet. Yeah. Um, yeah, she because is I feel like calls I a couple of different things. I feel like I do understand uh, what he's doing there, uh, but um, I want. But that's the character that they're purposefully hiding the information about yeah. in the story of the show. So it just leaves me being like, sort of watching a little bit through squinted eyes, being like, okay, okay, oh, that was cool. But I don't. I'm not really. Got, I don't have my hands around the whole story. I think I'm going to end up being then the most positive about it so far because I really like this a lot. I understand what you guys are saying intellectually, but I was immediately into the whole vibe of the show. And I think that's, and I say this complimentarily, I think that's what it's coasting on a lot is sort of like the spooky, yeah. witchy, Halloween y vibe. And yeah. from my perspective, it's completely crushing that. So as soon as it gets that, it feels like. A lot of the stuff that they're calling out in the closing credits, like there's a shot of Feruza Balk from The Craft, and I was like, yeah. that's what you're going for. You're going for The Craft, Practical Magic, that sort of thing, where it's yeah. like, okay, something's a little off here. I don't know what it is yet, but it's going to rock it out into something bigger by the end. So I hear what you guys are saying again about like, yes, maybe the True Detective Mayor of Easttown parody, I'll put in quotes, went on yeah. for a while, maybe a little longer than it should have. Well, with that, I didn't even mind the length of it because I was like, oh, maybe this is what we're going to do every episode. Right. It's like start in a in a fun genre take and let Agatha smash out of it. I'm fully on board with that idea. But the whole thing, it was so close to the actual Mayor of Easttown, yeah. True Detective of it. I was like, let it be fun a little, mm-hmm. guys. She well, was but, just so – it was just so Let buried. me throw it out there. Very I strange. think – I think something that I would intuit that the show, and again, this might be like me being immediately into it, but I think it's laying out a lot of information for us. I understand where you're coming from. And again, I'm not saying this specifically, but like for the Marvel brain of, ooh, what are these secrets? I got to figure out these secrets. But I think we do forget that's how plot works. You don't lay everything out immediately. And And again, I'm not being like dismissive, but things like, I I wanted to call out one specific thing in the what are the what was like Agnes of Westview based on the data series Von the Vision or yeah, whatever it very was. Cool. Great job. Fun. Yeah. But there's that quick shot of her opening the empty bedroom in her house for Nicholas Scratch, who yeah. if you know, bad boy Scratch. alert. Woo! Bad boy alert. Oh, not, the on, Nicholas, Nicholas not the Nicholas Scratch yeah. from Chilling Adventures of Superman. No, that's exactly that. who it is. We don't know that, a, Alex. I mean, How it could it not be? He's it's coming back. Which world? I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> it's all witches. Witches. Yeah. Witches, How could it witches not all be? the way down. Scratch, we scratch, do love that Nicholas itch. Scratch, but Nicholas Scratch is also the son of Agatha Harkness from the comics. Yes. He's a villain. He is the father of the Salem Seven in the comics. I don't know if they're going to go that far. But Ooh. what I really liked about that was that worked on so many levels, that quick, I don't know, I want to say 30 second shot of her looking in there and looking around the bedroom, because it works on the level of, of course, on this sort of detective show, she yeah. has a tragedy in her past. Yes. It was powering her the future. I was like, great, that works. But it also works on the level of, ooh, it's a Marvel Easter egg, Nicholas Scratch. I know that character for the comics. But it also, I think, potentially works in terms of powering her emotional story. And we'll see how it goes. But, like, I don't think they just threw that in there for no reason. I think they threw it in there to be like, hey, man, we got Agatha for two episodes, really, at the end of WandaVision. All she was was antagonist. That's really all we got about her. So giving her that, I think that's something real. You know, like we also get the locket with the hair in it and there's a mystery about it. So 
mind you, this could all fall apart in some way, but I think there was actually probably a lot of information laid out over the course of that Mayor of Easttown parody that is going to pay out over the course of the next eight episodes. A hundred percent. And that's not the part that is um, the coyness that's bothering me. I actually like that. The Nick Scratch thing, I think that's really smart. And the mystery around the teen, I think, is great and really yeah. well done. The fact that like she just can't perceive what he's mm -hmm. the information he's trying to communicate that's smartly done and just a good like breadcrumb style mystery it's more they don't really say what the witch's road is or does why it's happening what agatha's feelings are at any point mm -hmm. like she's within the parody she's sort of generally mad but it's unmotivated because she's just it's, doing a parody. It's, it's exactly. Detective, yeah. But then when she comes out of it, she's still sort of the same. We don't get her real pop until the end of the second episode when she's like, why don't you guys shoot me? Or just shoot me with your powers. And that was cool. But also – I believe the but, line was blast me, you Blast bitches. me. Blast yeah. me, you bitches. Which is great. But I also think – Yes. But I also was like, oh, sorry. I don't – now I feel I didn't didn't expect that Agatha in the moment. I, it made me retroactively miss her the whole time. And mm -hmm. I was like, why did we have like mad Agatha the whole time without any of the fun underpinning? Well, yeah, I mean, it was because they were going for the fun detective parody. But uh, to, uh, to JT Sizzle's point a little bit, I did want like because I felt like because they were kind of walking different lines, I wanted them to lean into the detective more. You know what I mean? Like really make it over the top because I was part of me. I was like, should I be laughing? Or because I know she's trapped in this world. I wasn't sure if I could be laughing because they're doing all these fun detective trope stuff of like, don't you run away from me, perp. I'll chase you down. Like yeah. all the good cop, bad cop. And the you know, like kicking the chair out, all that kind of crazy stuff. So I wanted to kind of uh, uh, be in more on the joke, but the whole time was kind of like, because when the plaza showed up, I was like, okay, great. The plaza is going to shake her out of this and now we can get to the road and kind of get it going. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, I just, I'm, I, I feel like I'm going to like this. I feel like it's just kind of getting, getting good. Uh, but man, right. I also was like, they did this fun thing of like, you know, at the song and credit kind of like, yeah, that was the season of the witch. Cool. And then at the second episode, it was just kind of like spooky music. And I was like, oh, I was waiting for that kind of like fun. Everybody thing. loves that, though. The Halloween spooky music CDs that are just like, doo, 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 and then it's coffin sounds for a little bit. Coffins opening. Yeah. Yeah. But I felt like season of the witch is up here and then coffin noises is a little bit of a, you know, what I mean? and you know why it's up there? Because it's more expensive and they probably only bought it for the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the song over the second credits was the instrumental version of uh, Ballad of the Witch's Road, the main theme, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I think well, so. And Pete, to what you were saying before um, mm -hmm. about sort of that line between parody and the reality of this detective show, I think that's one of the hardest things to pull off in any sort of show. Jumping the line between comedy and sort of making fun of what's happening and then seriously communicating the stakes and like, oh, wait, this is actually is scary. There was a murder. Who are these people? One of the shows that I think does it really well is something like The Boys. They're able to jump back and forth between like satire, parody, and then real character-driven action. And I think this show it's not they just decided to not commit to the fun part so they yeah. could sustain the plot it felt like because uh, to, to give another compliment to that first episode i do think the sort of more scary like david lynchy stuff that's happening at the end and the you know the the pictures down and then the different pictures like that reality bending stuff i thought did play well it's just they set the parody bar and so i was like it felt like a turn to get to that and then so i enjoyed it yeah, I mean, there were some really funny parts, but I, I wanted them to lean it. Like, I thought it was hysterical that there was such a huge line at the library. Like, that was just such a fun throwaway kind of bit of like, oh, I'm going to cut in line. I was like, who are all these people waiting at the library? Like, awesome. Uh, it's a funny bit. But also, like, there was that moment where she's like eating a donut, but then kind of like, oh, I'm trying to hide it a little bit. But I was like, lean into the like, 
you know, the fact that like cops eat donuts and she doesn't want to kind of be like, oh, I'm eating a, a donut. I was just kind of. No, I think she was just eating it quickly, honestly. Like she was walking with it in her mouth and then she realized she's walking with her mouth. So she's trying to eat it quickly. So she doesn't do that. Yeah. But, but like she's playing a detective and cop donut. Like it's right there. Like why not lean into that a little bit? You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. The other thing is like to your point also, like you have Catherine Hahn at the center of the show. The Hahn. She's like, she's like uh, an F1 racer of like pulling off. Off, uh, comedy with an emotional underpinning yeah. and they just don't have it right there in the writing so it's like you feel her engine revving and you don't quite get the peel out that you want i feel like. mm, i i hear what you're saying but i do want to compliment her physicality throughout oh these my episodes, God, particularly yes. like granted she's doing kate winslet and mara Town for a bulk of the first episode but once she breaks out as she's agatha pretty much in every scene she has her mystic yeah, figures yeah. Yeah. going even though well, she the... can't cast spells which is so cool and it, while we're talking about her eating things uh, before i forget i want to give a shout out to her, her eating the corn dog in the mall in the second episode just like gnawing on it like a dog yeah one of the weirdest things i've ever seen on tv but so funny and so strange yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I even love like the first time, you know, we saw her in the purple. You know what I mean? She was like walking tall and I love the way she was mm -hmm. kind of swinging it around. Great costume. And, yeah. Shout out the, to the costumes on the show. And the also wardrobe, the wardrobe across the board on this yeah. show is sick. The Plaza's kind of like witch outfit was fantastic as well when she attacked her at her home was great. Sorry. Could you just use that term you just used um, to this, that character? The Plaza? The Plaza? The plaza. the plaza. He's talking about Rockefeller Plaza, his favorite yeah. place to hang out in New York City. Nope. Nice. Fun spot. Um, you mean Aubrey Plaza, of course, playing yeah. a villain who is undefined and then left behind, <laughs> uh, which I was like, cool. Oh, probably Wait, not. What? Yeah. Oh, oh, you think she's going to come back? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I do. if she didn't come back, that's the biggest flex of all. <laughs> Did it? She was like, like I'm that, just here for the it, beginning. Just the setup. Yep. Well, like, I mean, weird knife, weird that was knife the handler. thing. She was so weird in Legion, too, and, like, very undefined. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, that's a real option. I actually thought it was very well-defined. I disagree with you on that because I think we, again, got all the information we needed about her relationship with Agatha in that great fight scene at the end of the first episode where – we find out, I mean, we don't have like the specific information of why they hate each other, but clearly they hate each other, but also maybe love Rio, each other. Yeah, they love each other, or at least Rio, she has that line where she's like, um, my black heart beats for you. Something happened in their past. I think they were in a romantic relationship in the past and something terrible happened. And it broke them apart, and now she wants to kill her. So it's very much like a enemies to lovers type thing going on there. They're probably also of equal power, I would bet, and equal evil. So we'll see what happens with that. Nice. That's what I love about a show is just when you bet on stuff at the beginning. You, you really? can intuit information based on what the lines and the actions are telling you, Justin. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I could look at that and be like, they're probably of equal power. <laughs> I'm sorry that they didn't turn to the screen and be like, Justin, so you know, we're of equal power. Here's what our mm -hmm. backstories are. Here's what's going on. And I'll add you a whole dossier. Not what I want. What I want is like some, it, it, and like, I don't want to overstate my criticism here, but when so much of everyone's motivations are completely undefined, mm -hmm. especially when we get to the second episode and we introduce all these characters that are interesting, but they're behaving not like normal people do. Like they no, don't, don't like be talking each about other. Sharon like that because Sharon, don't you dare come at Sharon. I, again, like I like, Could, I think all the characters are Can we talk about the fact that we, uh, they killed her husband off screen? That was a bit of a bummer where she's like, oh, yeah. miss, not Mr. Davis, whatever his actual name is. Mr. Ha uh, Mr. Davis is his real name. She's like, Mr. Davis died a year ago. That was unnecessary. Why'd they kill him off? He was fun. Yeah. Vision's boss. Dude, you don't, you don't know what Mr. Davis is like. I mean, come on. He could oh, be yeah. a real asshole. Well, I actually, like, I looked it up and I was like, Fred Melamud, everybody loves Fred Melamud. Did he die? And he didn't die. And then I was like, well, did he get canceled? And he didn't get canceled. Everybody still likes him. So. Maybe know. like Seasons of the Witch, he's only, um, he's too expensive to do. Too expensive. <laughs> they couldn't pay those Melamud bucks. Yeah, exactly. Mellow money is hard to come by. Uh, but what I was going to say is like, we lay them out and then they're like, we hate you, but we're coming to your party and we're going to do this difficult thing. That's yeah. a road in the woods that we don't know what it's about, but we are doing it. I was like, okay, here we go. 
We, I a, will of course agree they that all we, know what it's about. I mean, it's a famous song in the witch community. Yeah, 40 million copies. Yeah. That was the, the one community. thing that didn't scan to me in the episode, I will say. What, the song? Oh. I thought, Sharon was having a great time. I thought it was fun when she kind of like got caught up in it. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm just saying that like this song, Ballad of the Witch's Road, so 40 million copies, that's a lot of copies. So yeah. that's the sort of thing like we've There's seen a lot, lot of, of MCU movies. At some point, somebody should have been listening to Ballad of the Witch's Road, plays on the radio or something like that. Captain America's list. They're like, you got to check out Star Wars and listen to Ballad of the Witch's Road. Interesting. I, see, that didn't bother me at all. And you're just really? like up in arms about I, this living, song. Living. Yeah. yeah. I'm writing. Um, I'm. I have been writing a letter to Bob Iger at Disney every hour on the hour, complaining about this. They got a. They got a re. Yeah, I've been handwriting them. Wow. And then putting, making them into airplanes and throwing them across the country. Oh, nice! How very whimsical. Iger loves that. You know, because Disney. <laughs> uh, everyone who works at Disney is whimsical. Um, that, I will say, while we're talking about the song, I thought the song was awesome, mm -hmm. and I thought it was a really well shot sequence, mixing the interesting song, everyone yeah. doing it. I thought that performances in that were all really good. There was some fun to be had. A little roasting yeah, of Patty Lupone. Teared up that one cry. That mm -hmm. was very cool, that one tear dropping. And that's the part where I feel like I was learning the most about these characters, as opposed to any of the scenes where they were talking, which is <laughs> always surprising, but it's a testament to, I think, the, the performers in this show, mm -hmm. that they were putting out the vibe in a way I thought was great and really got me excited for what's happening from this episode on. I will agree with you that the Ocean's Eleven second episode, putting the whole gang together to pull off this Witch's Roads heist, that's not what they're doing. But that was very much like, here's who I am. Here's my current situation. This is why I need to go on the Witch's Road. This is my motivation. And here we go. So hopefully we will find out more about them as we go throughout the season and throughout the episodes. But yeah, it was very like surface level with pretty much everybody um so i'll definitely agree with that i think patty lapone probably got the most time out of them. i mean yeah as she should i mean she killed it oh that was God. absolutely fantastic that was great and i'm most intrigued about her like i never like seeing into the future stuff but i think the way they're doing her powers and the way they should be performing it in terms of her divination is kind of like alarming in and yeah. off putting in an interesting especially way. the way that one line where she was like get off me it was like yeah. oh shit what's to come yeah i like that it seems like there's a cost the magic for that they're each going to be doing um, is going to uh really because we have our protection witch our green witch our potions and then our divination mm -hmm. and then agatha who's there to be fun and so later I also really like Sashir Zamata, yes. Jennifer Kale. I thought she was yes. very fun, and she's a good foil for Catherine mm -hmm. Hahn. Like, there was some good repartee going on between them. Yeah, the back and forth. Also, <laughs> tasting a candle is gross. I'm just going to mention that. What? Really? I, I love I taste all the candles. Have Babies are it? delicious. What? What, what did you say, Pete? Babies are delicious? Feels like a non sequitur. Right. No, well, I uh, mean, just a you talk about eating. Is it a confession? No, you're talking about eating candles, and then in you know later in that scene they talked about eating babies, and then mm. you know, but mm. they are delicious. Mm -hmm. That's fair. You're yeah. really on board with that. Um, I do think I, I think Sashir, especially as a counterbalance to the Agatha we get at the end of the episode, Sashir very dry, very just like coming in there with a, a undercutting line. I think is a nice balance to Agatha and Jim. And I'll also throw out there: I'm interested in Ali Ahn, who's playing uh, Alice Wu Gulliver. I know her the least as an actress, so just as a viewer, I was like. All right, I don't know who you are necessarily. So um, didn't pop as much to me as the others. Also, she wants to be there the least. So it's always tough to get into a character who's like, I'd rather be anywhere else than in this show right now. But curious to see what's going on with her because she definitely seems like she's central. I'll also throw out there, great to see all the Westview res residents again. It was fun to see them pop yeah. up in the first episode and in the second episode that was pretty interesting especially enjoyable. that one dude who was like are you seeing this shit that was a stare yeah yeah He's is that the mustache guy the mustache guy no not mustache guy but mustache no. guy is great like he mm -hmm. is funny as shit very funny <laughs> we got to see Dottie 
Emma. Yeah. I'm yeah. forgetting her full name now, but Emma Caulfield. That was fun. Yeah. And yeah, Herb, who also is not his actual character's name, but Herb from WandaVision. Um, the whole Wanda is comes it Herb up. or Herb? Herb? I, oh, I don't know. Herb? It's I never seen a, a human named Herb. Uh, <laughs> it's a witch show. Call, they use herbs. You don't call an herb a herb. Yeah, I was going to name my kids Herb and Spices, but my wife said <laughs> That's no. fun. Yeah, well, the KFC will come after you, dude. Yeah, they're very litigious about that. The whole nude scene, I thought, was great. Like I Very thought funny. Very yeah. funny, very well done, and just also like shouts to marvel for going for it because they they've had funny butt nudity from men before but women don't get that like not even just at yeah. marvel but just in general they don't get to do funny nudity like the only example i can think of is jennifer lawrence and what was the name of that movie that she did recently X-Men. The... Oh. <laughs> X-Men. Yeah. No, I X-Men mean, first sort class. Of. Sort of. She, I mean, she's bit. in. She's basically nude. Uh, no, 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 you no. mean Whatever. the comedy um, yeah. where she dates the kid. Yeah. Uh, which Whatever. I, she uh, got to do like a funny nude scene there. But like that sort of evening the playing field, I think beyond the fact that it was very funny and played in a very funny way, I think that's kind of important to do in terms of society and in terms of the show when you have a majority female creative team and a majority female cast coming out and being like, hey, man, we're going to do this, too. We're going to do the same level of humor that dudes have been allowed to do for decades at this point and throw it in there. Again, not to spend too much time on this, but I thought it was very smart on several levels. I agree. Yeah. The movie was no hard feelings. Yes. Yeah. Not a great movie, got to say. Uh, that scene was that was, scene was really awesome though. There the was some yeah, really scene was hilarious. Scene was so is very funny. There was some and the great piano scenes. playing scene. The piano so, playing, yeah, the uh, man eater so, song gets and you the, the uh, feels. Coke I mean, Pepsi song, a Coke Pepsi, yeah. Pepsi joke, also very. Yeah, that was yeah, the same. Should we good. leave? I cried oh. during the piano scene. Yeah, I, I, I thought you were going to say you cried during the Coke Pepsi joke. Dude, I laughed so hard when he was like, "Should we leave?" Oh my god, good movie. <laughs> anyway, anyway speaking everybody, great... listen to our No Hard Feelings podcast. No hard podcasts uh, that's available nowhere right now. No speaking of feelings. great, great lines, there's some really banger lines in here. Um, when she's talking about uh, her, uh, what was it, her pet or human? What was it? Teen, teen. teen where, um, she has such a. This is my familiar Toto. Uh, that was just so funny. Um, yeah, uh, Sisterhood of the Traveling Kegels was a hysterical line. There was a there was a bunch of really funny uh, lines in here that uh, I was really impressed with. Ironic, more like iconic. <laughs> I thought it was really sharply written across the board. Like, I agree with you that not every joke was a knee slapper, laugh out loud funny, but everybody was moving a pace and getting the lines out really sharply and really smartly. So, I don't know. Again, I was more of a fan of it clearly than you guys. But why don't we talk about some theory stuff that's mm. going on? Let's talk about teen. What do you think is going on with teen? There's some popular theories here, but I'd love to hear from you guys. I mean, the... Uh... The Nick Scratch, maybe I had Bad Boiler in my brain, but like, isn't he going to be Nick Scratch? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, right? I think there's two possibilities, right? The one that makes the most sense for the plot that the way they've set it up is Nick Scratch. Like, yeah. if he shows up, Agatha is not be able to see him. They go on the road together. And what is he? I forget the exact phrase, but he's like, and the road gives you what you want the most. I think there's no yeah. way we end up with at the end of the show. They're like, and we both got power at the end, <laughs> you yeah. know, if what they want the most turns out like she wants her son and the son wants a mother and there you go. That's how we get that thing. Uh, alternately, the other alternate theory going into here was that he is Billy Maximoff, a.k.a. Wiccan, the character from Young Avengers. Oh. And I do think there's some indications there as well. Like, I think... Could be. He repeats the spell multiple times, like he says it very quickly, which is how Wiccan uses his powers in the comics. He also looks exactly like Wiccan in the comics. But I will throw out there, give it, and maybe this is overthinking it, but giving WandaVision had the whole Quicksilver shows up and he turns out to be Ralph Boner. I wonder if they're doing a similar thing here where fans are going to watch this and be like, of course he's wicked. He's wicked. He's Billy Maximoff. He's going to end up, this is how the Scarlet Witch comes back to life at the end of the show. 
but actually he's Nicholas Scratch, and that's the thing, like we're saying, makes the most sense for the emotional arc of the series. I'm hoping it was going to be something where it's like Darcy's child. You know, we can pull Darcy into this world. You know what I mean? Mm. Well, mm. actually, that's another thing Long I was uh, wondering about today. Do you think we're going to get any MCU cameos? Like, is that is this that sort of show? Well, I, mean, I don't know about it, a lot, but I'm hoping for a couple more. You know what I mean? I Don't you think we see Scarlet Witch? Yeah. At some point. <laughs> I, I talk I, about I, her so much. Yeah. I got to think she's, you know, we're going to maybe see a vision that she was the body at the beginning of the first episode or something. Well, uh, she's definitely the body. And like, yeah. in case it was. Oh, we're going to see. I mean, we're going to actually yeah. see uh, her. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're doing the right structure for a season, you introduce the Scarlet Witch is dead. That is something Agatha is dealing with. She moves beyond it. But we need to loop back to that by the end. And like you're yeah. saying, whether it's like that's something she needs to fight on the witch's road or maybe that is in a big way, like the way we get the Scarlet Witch back to life, because I'll throw out there like if Joe Locke's teen is Billy Maximoff, he talks about his parents a little here. He shuts off a phone call from his boyfriend. If he actually is Wanda's kid and he doesn't realize it, but what he wants the most is for her to come back to life, that's something potentially that can happen at the end of the show as well. Uh, yes. The only thing, though, I, I feel like um, what other character could we encounter from a story perspective? Doctor Strange, mm -hmm. uh, right, would make some direct sense. But uh, I don't think there's going to be any larger moves uh, in that direction. And then from a business sense, I sort of doubt Marvel's in the market uh, for putting any big moves in their television shows right now. I think they're trying to sort of keep everything a little bit more standalone, bite size, rather than like what's been the modus operandi in the past. I mean, I'll throw out there to Pete's point, I could see Darcy and Jimmy Woo come back if they do loop back to WandaVision in some way. Um, I don't know how necessarily that would work. We could also get Paul Bettany as well, because he was obviously part of that show. So I think those are all possibilities. And but that's also, a good call. They, and we do have a, a show uh, of Division coming. Right, so which they're referring sense. to that as like the third part of a trilogy. So it could potentially set that up in some way. I guess we'll see. Um, Selfishly, is, it would be fun to see She-Hulk in there. Just for it. I don't know how. Popeye, break the yeah, just wall. to... Yeah, walk by or something. Yeah, walk by. Yeah. Bigfoot style. <laughs> uh, I agree with Justin that, or at least like I'm hoping this is very insular. I'm hoping this just focuses on Agatha, this covet, and doesn't distract with, with, and then Captain America shows up or whatever. But I guess we'll see. Uh, and then the other one is about Rio and Agatha's relationship. What do you think is going on there? I mean, I agree with you that it does make sense if it's like, uh, you know, friends, lovers, enemies, some sort of dichotomy there. But also like what if this is this is all Scarlet Witch is at the core of this show, it feels like. So I, I feel like it's actually where does she factor in as well? Mm -hmm. I, and, and I bet there's a backstory that involves the three of them. Hmm. Classic yeah. love triangle. You got a green, a purple and a red. There you go. Yeah. That's it. The vomit oh. rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else about the show before we move on to our final section here? Anyhow. Yeah, I just wanted to say that, like, we were talking a little bit about some of the shots and the kind of, like, shot where we saw the 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 witch road that was all purple leaves and then the big moon there it was just such a cool, inviting, like, hey, are you ready for this adventure? And I, I thought that was such a great shot. Uh, super impressed with it. Um, yeah, I, I and then also the scary stuff with the, the kind of creepy moving uh, Salem uh, 7 there was just, uh, you know, I, there's a lot of different things going on in the show, and they did uh, did a lot of stuff really well. And they left Senor Scratchy behind, right? The rabbit? Yeah, they did. You know, the rabbits, they could come out of hats. So mm -hmm. I bet we see him again. All right. You take a rabbit down a hole with you, though. I mean, come on. That's just, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
classic expression. Yeah. Before we wrap up here, why don't we go to our vision <laughs> board where we talk about what we expect or what we want to happen next. Uh, we're going to go going to one episode a week starting next week. So what do you want to see or what's on your vision board for episode three? Justin? I I love the sort of storybook nature that the show took on as soon as we hit the song. It felt like it really just locked into a type of storytelling. Everyone has a little role. We have like a contentious relationship. I want to see them sort of all the different witches in the coven uh, reveal a little bit about themselves, get a little bit of backstory, maybe focusing on one of them each each episode or two of them, probably more likely given the timing. And then just like some fun, surprising, uh, the apple trees throw apples at you from Wizard of Oz style reveals. Like, I wanted to get get weird with this show. Yeah, uh, Justin took my answer. But yeah, I'm hoping that... Uh, things... You were going to say the thing about the apples? No. I'm, You're going to say I'm, apples, trees that no. throw apples? What I was going to say is I hope that along the road, you, either they get split up or something happens where we're getting like two at a time, like their backstory, because, you know, obviously we want to hear more about Sharon and, uh, you know, how she made it from the 70s show to 90s show to this, you know, so. Uh, Same character. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, um, yeah, because it is such a interesting, weird show, like let's lean into that, whether it gets more creepy or more different kinds of things. You think we're going to get a, a Fez cameo? Oh, Pete, dude, based come on? on, man. That would be sick. I, I agree with everything you guys are saying. And the other thing, I know I've been saying this all episode long, but I just want to see more of the plaster, as I call her. Like, I think it would be great if she comes back on the show. So mm -hmm. that would be a lot of fun. The plaza, Gotta get baby. their shoes back. <laughs> well, eventually, that's the last thing. Yeah, you think you, yeah, there's probably sticks on that road and stones. They're going to, like, really scratch up their feet. Yeah. So a sticks plot line stones. dealing with that, I would say, where they're like, ouch, yeah. my feet. Soft leaves, man. That's You don't need shoes. Mm. Nice. Yeah, Pete famously barely wears shoes. <laughs> Pete, you should try living in New York City sometime because this is a shoe palace, basically. Yeah, I did for 22 years, my friend. Barefoot, I, barefoot I feel like I would have seen you. I always say. Yeah, I would have bumped into you if you were living here for that long. <laughs> yeah, we're getting see. far afield, so why don't we wrap up here? We will be back every week talking about the individual episodes of the show. If you'd like to support the show and all the shows we do, patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, we do a live show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to Every Tuesday? Yeah, at YouTube. Come on out. We would love to chat with you about Agatha all along. Apple, Spotify, Android, or the app of your choice to subscribe, listen, and follow the show at Comic Book Live on Twitter slash X, Comic Book Club Live on TikTok and Instagram, comicbookclublive.com for this podcast and many more. Until next time, we'll see you on the witch's road. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you on the road, bro. Blast me, trip. you bitches, is what we say.